Hello, Calc kids. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. This is Mr. Bean. Today's lesson is on something called alternating series. So we're going to look at the alternating series test to help us know if the series is converging or not. Now, an alternating series is when you go from positive to negative, positive to negative. So the first number might be positive, the next number is negative, the next number is positive. And usually what you have here is this negative one raised to the some power, some nth power. Now, it's not always. I'll show you an example later on that you have an alternating series where that doesn't exist, but typically that's what you'll see for an alternating series. So what we get is uh, some kind of like a function here that we say is positive. So if a of n is positive, that's this thing, and you're multiplying it by an alternating number, so positive, negative, positive, negative, this portion of it is the alternating piece, then it's going to converge if two conditions are met. So again, the first thing is we recognize it's alternating, and then if it's an alternating series, then here's the two conditions. The first one is that the limit as n approaches infinity of this a of n here, this function, is going to equal zero. That's the first condition. If the limit doesn't equal zero, then it's not going to, well, we can't say that it converges. Now the second condition here is this, and that is that the succeeding term is smaller than the previous term. So in other words, the, if you have the first term, the second term will be smaller. For if you have the third term, the fourth term is going to be smaller, the one that comes next. Or in other words, this is just a fancy way of saying that it is decreasing, that these things are decreasing. Now, why the absolute value? I put the absolute value there just to make sure that you understand, like it's we're not confusing it with the negative. Like if you, sometimes students will apply the negative one. Technically, I don't need to put those absolute values there because I've already said here that it's got to be positive, but I'm putting them there. A lot of times you'll see textbooks do that uh, just to, to reference that it's the entire thing. So we don't care that it's positive or negative. You just take the absolute value and the next term has to be smaller than the previous term after that. Okay, so now how can you check to make sure that it's decreasing? How do you know that a of n is decreasing? One way is you take the first derivative, see if the first derivative is negative. I don't like this way because this is the hardest, most cumbersome part of doing it. So I would probably avoid that if I can, taking the first derivative to see if it's negative. Usually it's obvious, you'll see what I mean, and that is just that if you look at the, at the value of your a of n, the expression, you can just plug in numbers and see, yeah, it's gonna get smaller. And then another way is to manipulate this thing. So if we say that this, the succeeding term is smaller than the previous term, another way of looking at that is one of these two things. You could just say, well, okay, the, so the bigger term minus the smaller term has to be positive. Okay, that's kind of like a no-brainer. The bigger term minus the smaller term is positive. Or this, I like this one. The, the uh, first term is the denominator of the second term or the fourth term is the denominator of the fifth term. And if you create a ratio, that has to be less than one. That's the only way for that to, to work out. For this, these two things to be true, this fraction would have to be smaller than one. So I'll do one example of those in these notes here. All right, so get those written down, let's practice this. So with our first example, we have here an alternating series. We have negative one raised to the nth power. So it's going to be alternating. And so let's check to see our various conditions. Now this actually here, this is kind of cool. This we've looked at before. This is harmonic. Okay, so this is our A of N. And this one actually is our harmonic P series. We've talked about this. This is called an alternating harmonic. So a harmonic P series diverges. That part of it diverges. Interestingly, when you create an alternating harmonic, it's going to converge instead of diverge. So here's how we can show that. The limit, do that in blue, the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n, so that is going to equal, well, as n gets really, really large, that's just going to equal 0. Okay, so good. Our first condition was met. Check. We're good there. So now our second condition. Is it decreasing? Is it getting smaller? So one way of checking that is just if I look at, this one's the obvious one. If I just say, if I plug in a one, plus, now plug in a two, plus, now plug in a three, plus, now plug in a four, and so forth. You just keep going and going going. You can see each one of these numbers is getting smaller, 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 smaller. So yeah, this thing is decreasing. So it meets both conditions. It is alternating. So we can therefore say that it converges by the alternating series test. Okay, so we met both conditions, it wasn't alternating, and so therefore it, con it converges. All right, so let's try another one here. So this time we have this piece right here, that is our A of N. It is, uh, 
it is alternating. We have this negative one raised to a power. Now, just because it says n plus one, that doesn't really change much, except for it's going to start off positive. See, this one is started off as a negative number. You plug in a one, it's negative. This one, when you plug in the one there, one plus one is two, it's going to make that positive. So that's the difference. When you have an n plus one, it may, just makes it the first number, whether it's positive or negative. That's how it changes things there. So let's first do the limit. First condition. So I'm just going to write a of n here, a sub n, because I don't want to write, rewrite that whole thing. So that is going to equal, well, let's see. This is the n to the first power. This is going to have an n squared on bottom. So an n squared on bottom with an n on top is going to create make this thing approach 0. OK, so we're good there. First condition met. Now what about the second condition? This is where it gets a little tricky. So we could do this thing where I plugged in numbers and I just kept going and going and going. And I could show a whole bunch of numbers there. Uh, and if I was using a calculator, that's kind of a nice thing. I could just plug this into, uh, into the calculator and check the table. I like using the table function and check for the table of values. But let me show you this trick here, which was dealing with this one. So I already know what a of n is. Let's write down what a of n plus 1 is equal to. So if I this n becomes an n plus 1, that makes this n plus 6. n plus 1 plus 5 is n plus 6. This one is n plus 1 plus 2. That's just n plus 3. This n plus 3 now becomes n plus 1 plus 3. So it's now n plus 4. So what next? Now we're going to do the ratio. So remember the ratio was that I'm going to say a of n plus 1 divided by a of n. So I'm going to take my a of n plus 1. So I'm going to rewrite this down here real quick. n plus 6 over n plus 3 times n plus 4. And now instead of dividing by a of n, I'm going to multiply its reciprocal. So the reciprocal of this, n plus 2 on top times n plus 3. And that's all over n plus 5. So now let's see, is this thing less than 1? Well, that's really, like, how do I know that? I'll show you. We're going to cancel out the n plus 3, cancel out the n plus 3. And then I'm going to multiply out long way. So I'm going to take n plus 6 times n plus 2, multiply that out, and I get n squared plus 8n plus 12. And then all over, and now I'm going to multiply n plus 4 times n plus 5. That gives me the this here, n squared plus 9n plus 20. Now, how do you tell if this is actually less than 0? Or excuse me, less than 1, I mean? Uh, I'm going to leave this numerator alone. n squared plus 8n plus 12. Now, this is kind of a cool way to manipulate this. If you take this, uh, this is the same thing as n squared plus 8n plus 12. It's going to, I'm going to write it exactly like the numerator, but then, so I have this portion of it, plus, so look here, I can say 1n plus 8. See, that is all equivalent to this denominator. So you can see here, the denominator is the same as the numerator, plus a little extra, plus an n plus 8. So that's how you can say that, yes, this is less than 1. So it meets both conditions, and you can say that this converges. OK, so that was a little bit complicated, but it is a way that you can prove and show how it is a decreasing function there. OK, number 3. This here, yes, again, it's alternating, negative 1 raised to the n plus 1. So now what's my a of n? My a of n, that I'm going to check the limit as n approaches infinity, this one is n plus 7 over n. That was sloppy. Let me clean that up. There, that's better. So now what does this equal? This is equal to 1. You have to know your horizontal asymptotes, right? We're going off to infinity. This is the first power. This is the first power. The leading coefficients are 1. So this equals 1. That does not equal 0. So therefore, we can stop. We don't even need to check the second condition that it's decreasing or not. Because if, whether it is or not, it doesn't matter. It does not meet this condition. Therefore, this thing is going to diverge. And we're done. So it diverges. In fact, it, if you remember the nth term test, the nth term test, if the limit doesn't equal 0, or, then we know it diverges. If it doesn't equal 0, we'd check the second condition. But once the, one of the conditions doesn't, doesn't work, you're done. You don't have to check the other one. Oh, yeah, this one here, number 4. So when you first look at this one, this is an example of where we don't see this negative 1 raised to the nth power. So when you don't see it, sometimes we think, okay, this must not be alternating then. And so how we might approach this differently. But this is an alternating sequence. And the reason is because cosine of 1 pi equals negative 1. And then if we plug in a 2, cosine of 2 pi equals positive 1. And then cosine of 3 pi 
equals negative one again. And it's going to bounce back and forth from negative one to one, negative one to one, over and over again. So this right here is the alternating piece. The cosine is the alternating. So since it's alternating, we can go ahead and check our, our two conditions. So we'll go ahead and do the limit as n approaches infinity of the a of n. a of n is one over n, which we already did this one, right? That was back on example number one. We did the one of n. So it's actually the same problem as number one, if you recognize it, but it's with, uh, but now the alternating piece is, looks a little different. So we said this was zero. So that meets the first condition. And then we, we know that one over n decreases, it's decreasing. And so we can go ahead and say that this converges by the alternating series test. Okay, so you can see this isn't too bad. Let's do one more example here. And that is, you have one here that actually is not an alternating series. So I'm, I would like you to try to look at this and just think about it. So pause the video, think about why this is not an alternating series. See if you can come up with the right answer. Okay, so here we go, I'm gonna explain this. So what happens is while you have this negative one raised to the nth power, that makes an alternating series but you also have a cosine here. And just like our last example, we saw that cosine is also alternating when you have cosine of pi. So if you plug in a one, you get negative one raised to the first power, and then you do cosine of one pi, that gives us negative one times negative one, which is a positive number. Now, if you do the next term, which would be two, so negative one raised to the second power of cosine of two pi, now that gives us a positive one, and cosine of two pi is also a positive one, so that again is a positive number. And we could keep going and check the third power, the fourth power, and three pi, four pi, and keep going, and you'd see it will always be positive. So this thing is not alternating. It's not an alternating series because it's actually always going to be positive. Now this n here and this n here, that's never going to be negative, right? Because you're just plugging in the numbers one, two, three, four, you keep counting up. So it's only this goes positive and negative, and the product of the two will make it so that it's always positive. All right, we finished up this lesson, so rock that mastery check, and I will see you back in the next one.